guys, it's Q1 qualifying Formula 1. Let's see who gets on top. Well, Q3 is the best bit. Just as long as Hamilton's not top, I'm happy. That might upset a lot of you, but I am a Ferrari fan for it. For it. That is it, that's the only F1 team I'm ever going to support. Simple. F1's just not nowhere near as good as it used to be, but I'm a Ferrari fan all the time, so I can't not watch. And it's Silverstone, you know. Formula One in England. It is kind of a home. A lot of British teams. Well, they have been. Not any good anymore, but we'll see. It is a sick track. I've been to see it twice. But yeah, I'm probably going to pause that. No, I'm probably going to mute it because, like, you don't want to hear that. And it'll get copyrighted. So yeah, podcast 19, we made it guys, we're here, just literally, first thing, whatever you did when you woke up this morning, you woke up, so just be thankful for that, first of all it's like, you know, you've got to get on the winning streak, you know, so appreciate the little things, and then you'll see the bigger picture really, you know, you go to buy a cup of coffee, that's however many well, I don't know, two quid, three quid of happiness right there and energy, literally so like only two quid for that that's a bargain so, so you know it's all about getting on that winning streak in life like all the little things you know you find a good parking space winning streak you know you mass are you still watching that thing? Yeah, don't don't shout or anything. I'm podcasting. You can say hi, but don't swear. Well, actually, yeah, swear, please. It's fine. Yeah. So anyway, as I was saying, guys, it's all about the, that winning streak in life. You know, you find that parking space, you get that green light, you don't hit a red. You know, winning streak. Um, it's from one of the um. Logan Paul podcast guest uh, can't remember his name anyway yeah so I just heard that today and I was like that's, that's good advice you know? if you're on a winning streak you've got that winning mentality you know how can you lose you can't lose but yeah guys this has just been a crazy week I've been addicted to Stranger Things on Netflix what a TV show what a like tribute to the 80s you know so much so many references. Can't get enough of them, like, what a show. Season three, I'm halfway through it. I think, or I'm at the end, I don't know. Depends how many episodes there is. I'm on episode eight. I won't spoil it for anyone, but yeah, I'm proper into that now. When it first came out, I was like, what is this? I just thought it was just like a kid's show, but there's kids in it, but it's not a kid's show. Like, I've seen Walking Dead, but this is more jumpy than Walking Dead for sure. Walking Dead's just zombies, you know, it's not that bad. It's just gory, but this is, like, strange, to say the least. Yeah. Um, if you've seen it, you, you know, I don't need to explain it anymore. Like, so many funny characters. But it's a mix of, like, the scary stuff and the funny stuff, like, in a show set in the 80s. What more do you want? <laughs> um, so, yeah, I've been watching that religiously. Uh, and I was, before that, was watching Black Mirror religiously, but, um, yeah, this kind of took over. So I just kept seeing the advert on Spotify, it keeps coming up, like, see what I mean, that's advertising right there, marketing, it's got me to watch the show, you know, but I've heard it's, it's very good, and I've, well, that's true so far, that's correct so far, because it, it is, like, I didn't expect it, 
be on this level, or that not sc it's not scary, but like, or that that much tension. The way they build the tension is good as well. So. Yeah, but how many more seasons are they gonna do? I don't know. But I'll just be sad when it ends because it's so good. Like every episode is like a cliffhanger, so like you get to the end and I want to watch the next one, and because it's Netflix, you've got every episode there, so you're fine. But yeah, more importantly, this week on Wednesday I was at Wimbledon. What a day! Guys. What a day! Wimbledon, you understand? I've never been, never seen a tennis match of that calibre. Saw the Murray and Serena Williams doubles match, which they lost, funny enough, but the big game was Federer. We got return tickets for centre court that we didn't expect to get at all. Just check there, the desk. Yeah, we'll put you on the list. No, wait. We'll get you in there now, there's space. Someone just left. So there you go. Seeing Feder the Federer game the other day, the year's quarter final against. Japanese Nishishori. Keep getting his name wrong, but that's as close as I'm gonna get. So, but yeah, Federer. Oh my god. You see him live, you realize how good he is. Like he's talented. Yeah, he battered Nadal as well. And whether you like tennis or not, like even if you don't properly watch tennis, you may know who Roger Federer is anyway, because like he's just so legendary in the sport. But he's really, you know, he's proper like top of the top of his game. Yeah, he has been for many years. I don't know about um, Nadal, but yeah, they're both quality. I wanted Federer to win only one, so. But yeah, we'll see how the final goes. At the moment, like you heard at the beginning, I'm just watching the Formula One quali qualifying. That's tomorrow as well, so you've got the F1, then after that, the Wimbledon final, men's. Just too much action in one day. But yeah, going to Wimbledon is just like something I never thought I'd, I don't know. I always was like, oh, it's one of them posh places, I'll never go there, like. But I, I did. I was there. And it's just surreal to actually be there, like, pinching myself the whole time. Definitely got to go back again. I mean, I didn't think we'd get to centre court, but we did. And I'll tell you what, like, what, like, the stewards there are just quality, like, compared to a football match, like, they actually care. They ask you how your day's going, what games did you see, what match, you know. Um, you know, they, they just, they just polite, make conversation, you know. Uh, a football game, they couldn't care less who you were, or some of them, but most of them, like, you've never seen them before, and that's it. And the, it's just what, you're there. So. But tennis is another level, and, and obviously, it, the, the weird thing is, like, no, I mean, it's not, I wouldn't say it's weird, but like, there's no riffraff. There's no crazy people like football. Um, but a lot of alcohol is consumed. And you're allowed to drink at your seat while you watch. At football, you can't do that because you just go mental. You'll start throwing stuff. But tennis is just so calm. It is a gentleman and woman's game. Like, it's the difference between a sport in England and a sport in America. Like, we're a bit more chilled over it. Like, rugby match great atmosphere and there's loads of alcohol but no one's fighting. Just football just brings out the crazy in everyone. But like cricket as well, there's a lot of alcohol but no one goes crazy like a football. Strange but yeah, those kind of sports like they're what we do over here, like they're different. And you look at that and you look at the NBA and NFL and baseball in America, it's just like uh, over the top. Yeah, fair enough, they're good sports too but like here we're a bit more reserved the way we do it was when it comes to top sporting like events, you know. These type of this type of sports we play here. A bit more laid back. Which is it is better in some ways. But yeah, I'd love to see an NFL match to be honest. But I mean there's nothing in the world of tennis there's nothing better than Wimbledon. There's no place that doesn't have a tennis event better. I don't think anyway, like on that scale, I don't, I don't know. Of, of all the events that the players go to, they, they probably love Wimbledon the most. And to win it is like top. So Federer, you know, he's got to be the best if he's getting into that many finals and winning that many. Just pure legend. Like, remember the Gillette Razor advert? It was him, Beckham, and Tiger Woods. 
and at the time they're just top of their top of their game in each of their sports really maybe not Beckham but like Beckham is a fate a, a big face um, you know I wouldn't say he was the best as a player but like as, as, as a, like a marketing tool he's definitely good for that I mean he was at the tennis the other days saying that <laughs> he had his uh, you know fancy watch his fancy suit probably all just product placement and advertising like all deliberately done but he is a bit of an icon he is an icon yeah but yeah so like I'm saying the advert was Tiger Woods Roger Federer and Beckham and from like obviously they really had all their fame but like that's what when it pro proves that someone's at the top if they're on that kind of advert I don't know why it does, but it does. Most of the time, depending, you know, if it's like a, it's like some washing up liquid, then okay, they've flopped and they're trying to make some money. But not when it comes to Gillette adverts or things like that. Um, I don't know. I just stuck in my mind, and I knew that like Tiger Woods was the best in golf, though I never watched golf. From that, I knew Federer was the best in tennis, though I never watched tennis really. Well, until 11 years ago when Nadal beat Federer and then after that I was just consumed by this game, like, really into it for a, a, a number of years, like, proper into it, then not so much, but then I thought, you know, I want to go to Wimbledon, I want to actually see what it's like live, and there, there I was at Wimbledon, you know, 11 years after I'd, I'd seen the, probably the best game of tennis. And yesterday we saw the rematch. Federer won this time, of course. He couldn't let Nadal win twice. But after that, I was just far, far more into tennis than, I, than I, I'd ever been before. And this just seals the deal. Yeah, I do recommend it as well. And like I said, the staff are really polite. They were really helpful and uh, respectful, you know. It's, it's a great day out, I mean. That area, that area of London I haven't been too much, like Richmond. It's a nice area as well, to be honest. I have to go back, definitely. It's near Kew Gardens as well. And you do cross the Thames, but it's like further west. It's like further up the Thames, I think. Yeah, anyway, I'm, 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 I used to say I was good at geography, but I don't think I am. I'm really not. I'm all right, like, in general. Like, if you say Middle East, I know where that is, you know what I mean? geographically yeah no but uh, last time on the podcast talking about travelling the world and stuff like that there's a lot of areas parts of England and London that I haven't been to as such and I bloody live here so you know you've got to explore more, I've got to explore more of this more before going elsewhere you know people go all, all around the world then they probably haven't been in areas in their own, to areas of their own country, strange. The amount of travelling people do, but like, there might be areas nearer, nearer to where they live that they don't even know. But yeah, but yeah, that's just, that's just it, isn't it? it life is an adventure. Well, you just well, you can have an adventure if you just go down the shops. It's, the, it's what you make of it, really. What are you doing in the fridge, bro? Always hungry. This guy's always hungry, guys. So what what are you getting from our fridge? Don't, please don't eat all the fruit. Yeah, guys, I like peaches, and he always eats the peaches. He blends them up in his fucking blender. <laughs> are you going to blend again? Trust me, last time I was so annoying. Starts blending fruit when I'm trying to talk. That's just gonna be so annoying. Oh, the clock's top, guys. It's one minute twenty-five point six four six. That's not gonna be the final time. It's got. I reckon it'd be like a one twenty-three. We're in Q two. Ten minutes of Q two left. If you understand any of that, nod yet. Yeah, it's just one of those things like Saturday F1 qualifying. I always watch it. It's more exciting than the race. Ten minutes to go. 
I haven't even been watching it at all. Vettel was like 15th, come on. Don't know what's going on here with Vettel, but... A lot of controversy, controversy in F1. After the whole Hamilton Vettel, Vettel being, having the win taken away. Because he allegedly cut up Hamilton. Yeah. But I'm not going to make this all about sports because I decided a long time ago on this channel. If I make it all about sports, then I'm shrinking my audience. The people that might watch my videos would be just sports fans. And that's not the way to go. It's not where the big bucks are on YouTube anyway. You've got, you've got to attract as many different groups, different people as possible. Yes, Vettel's fighting back here. He's got no time set. Sorry guys, I will be very distracted watching this. Can't not be. But yeah, even like speaking of going to live sports events, like Wimbledon F1, you go there live and it's just a different game, different ball game. I mean, maybe now the cars don't sound like they used to when they had pop up big engines. Now they're all like half hybrid or whatever and they make some weird sound. Like, anyway, they changed the, set, the engine setup so they're like different sound to what they used to be. Back in the day, you needed earplugs. Now you don't, I don't think. But still, what an event to be at. I've been to Silverstone a few times. Like, I, I've been driven around in, in a race car. On a, I've been to a Porsche, like track day. So I've been, I've been on the track myself. And the tour of the whole thing. I've seen a race twice and that's just... It involves a lot of sun cream if the sun's out. Like, you've got to get sunburned or, or not. That's it. Me, I, I'm not too bad, but on your skin, you know what I'm saying. But yeah, not another great event. I mean, I'll definitely go again. I want to see like the Monaco Grand Prix or like some the Monza Grand Prix in Italy. One of them, just like it's just the timing of the year when they are. It's just not ideal always. Yeah, it's weird watching this with no sound. Like, you, it takes away half the excitement. But I needed to podcast, like... Um, I think about 19 podcasts. Oh, it feels like I've done many more than that, but, like... I haven't, because I took up a huge break. Over, like, Christmas, I think. Or when I was ill back in October, but, yeah. I forgot about that, how ill I was back then. <laughs> but, yeah, all's good. And it's supposed to be summer, but today is one of them days where it's just cloudy, but it's warm enough. Got a barbecue at a friend's house tonight. That close family friends, like, for many years, so that's going to be fun. Familiar faces. Alcohol. You know, booze. And, of course, barbecue. Barbecued meat. There's nothing else like it. For all you vegans that well, vegans wouldn't appreciate that, but yeah. There's probably gonna be vegetarian food there too. You know. You can have a salad, it's fine. Fine. Just a salad. Some cake. Well no, you can't eat cake either, vegans, can you? Certain cake. Uh, yeah, I think there's like is it like I don't, I don't know the reason why it's like Gummy bears as well, you can't eat gummy bears. Something in them that's from animals. I don't know. I mean, I've got nothing against vegans. Be who you want, you know. Some people aren't vegans by choice. They're vegans because of, like, illness or something, or, like, allergies, you know. Some people just out of choice are vegan. It doesn't suit everyone, because they don't eat enough of other stuff to make up for the meat they're not eating. But I don't get vegetarian burgers or sausages. You're a vegetarian, why do you want to be reminded of meat? If you don't eat meat, why do you want something that is named after something that's got meat in it? But, you know, give it a different name, but if you're calling it a vegetarian burger or a vegetarian sausage, it doesn't make any sense. I, I don't, I'm confused. It doesn't make sense. Maybe someone can explain it, explain it to me. Like, why they're naming vegetarian things after things with meat in them. 
Why that makes any sense, I don't know. Well, then you, you've got a chicken Caesar salad. It's got chicken in it. But it's a salad, but it's got chicken in it. Confusing. But yeah, sorry guys, I'm having a bit of a no gel hair day today. We'll put gel at some point later today. But I just washed it, so... Yeah. But it's not a bad hair day. But it's not a good hair day, but... It'll have to do. I'm on a winning streak, so you know. We'll see. It's one of them weird days though, like it's hot, but it's not sunny. I mean, yesterday was, was a lot warmer. I'm just getting all the sun I can in the garden because all that's brown on me is my arms. And then, like, my forearms and my hands. Like, my shoulders and the, my upper arms are all white. Don't get me started on, on the rest, on, like, my chest, but that's another story. Because on the beach, we just, like, mozzarellas on the beach, like, all white and pale and pasty. No. no, I get a tan pretty easily, but we're always embarrassingly white. Because we live in England where there's not that much sun. It's like two months and then rain. Like two months of summer, literally. Three or four weeks. Yeah. That's what I give it. <laughs> um, but the rest of the world is lucky. Got far more sun. Unless you live in Iceland. Then you're screwed. They've got no sun over there. Now half the year they do, half the year they don't. Half the year is like grey. All the time. It doesn't become night or day. Which is probably worse. But yeah, so... It's been a, a, a great few weeks. Great week. A few weeks. Uh, yeah. Talking about Sunday when I was at the, um, the local park. At the car show. Oak Hill Park, that is. Local park. Who says that? Um, no, it was just a great day out. We saw a lot of old fa familiar faces. Friends of ours. Two of my dad's friends had their cars out at the car show. Which we didn't even know about. It's like a random thing. It's turned up, oh hey! I know you. Who's that? You know what I mean? It's great. Great day out. We saw a lot of people we knew from the... From, like, different times in my life or in our lives. I saw one of my old teachers from like primary school when I was like 10. You know what I mean? I, I'm, I was thinking like, aren't half these people retired by now, surely? They remember what I look like though, yeah, well. I, well, I'm pretty unique. <laughs> if not for the nose, for the wheelchair, but you know, I'm pretty <laughs> unique. Like, not many kids, like, there wasn't any other kids in my class that were in a wheelchair, so that's it. Like. How can they forget me in that sense? But, yeah, no, so that was like a, a whole day out, which I crave days like that, like just a whole day out. Just don't always enjoy being at home, but I've got a lot of help from making vlogs and you guys in that sense. I mean, I, I'm pretty happy at home as well, but like, spend the whole day out vlogging is just nothing else I'd rather do, to be honest really relax as well on the Sunday and at Wimbledon of course I got to vlog which was great you saw that vlog I hope if you haven't do check it out it's not my best vlog because I was just so in awe of the day and the situation that I need to take it in as opposed to vlog as a as opposed to vlog because when you're vlogging you kind of miss a lot if you know what I mean I'll be looking down I'll be like looking down at the GoPro turning it on oh no they want they want again they won that point, you know. Tennis is too quick for that. But it's, it's a new experience vlogging at tennis. Another sport, I've vlogged at football so many times. It's literally too much. I'm fed up of doing that, to be honest. Don't know how many more of them I'll do, or I'll just change up the way I do it. I, I don't know. But yeah, so I want to go back to Wimbledon again for sure. Just there's so much to see that we didn't see. We didn't see Henman Hill. Um, and of course I want to see more high, pro high profile games. Seeing Murray and Serena Williams was pretty good. Pretty funny as well that game. Even though they lost it was like pretty entertaining. Everyone shouting, come on Andy. Just as they're serving, like just distract everyone. But like I said, there's no craziness. It's pretty respectful. It's a pretty respectful game all round. So yeah, like I said, it's been a fun few weeks. Um, getting out more with this lovely weather because winter like 
I just hate going out. But like, no, I'm just thinking like, where I've been numbering the vlogs this year, don't discount all my old vlogs from the previous two years. Do go back and watch some of them if you haven't. If you're new here, that is. If you've been here a while, there's probably one you haven't seen. But for the day I blow up, like, as it blow up, when I say blow up, I don't mean physically blow up and explode. I mean, when I blow up as in get loads of more subscribers and get a bit of fame. I don't know about fame, but when I get, get like, um, loads more subscribers, like when I start reading them in, oh, Mourinho, Mourinho's at the F1. Hello, Jose. <laughs> Little wink at the camera. Special one. But yeah, what was I saying? What was I saying? Yeah, anyway, like, go back and watch my old vlogs. Like, some of them are cringe but funny in some ways. I love watching how, how I've developed the, my vlogging since then. And how I haven't in some ways. I've just been myself. Um, but yeah, when I'm not vlogging, I just feel naked. And like, weird without it. I don't know, there's, there's not many opportunities I don't take to vlog, like, it should be every chance I can get. Don't worry too much about what's entertaining and what's not, it's just vlogging, but it used to be more literally of a daily vlog, just me talking about whatever I'm going through that day, but I've got more creative with the way I do it, making them more like short films sometimes. I vary between that and vlogs, it depends like the more relaxed approach of vlogging the podcast you know so yeah I've been numbering them since the beginning of this year not to discount any of the vlogs in the past but I, I, at the beginning like I probably should have started numbering the vlogs in the beginning then it would be like 500 and something by now or more but like to keep track like at first I wasn't thinking I wasn't thinking about longevity it's like trying the first vlog upload see what happens and that feeling you get when you're about to press pu press publish after you've like uploaded it that feeling you get there's nothing else like it and then once you've uploaded it ah relief on to the next one move on so it's ongoing and not everyone can deal with it and I've taken breaks on and off here and there um I'll take a break at almost every weekend anyway over the weekend I might vlog and then edit Tuesday Wednesday Thursday that kind of thing in a week where I've got less going on. It's the weekends where I really work, to be honest. More vlogging goes on too. Especially when I'm at football. But football does not start till September. Can't wait for that part of your football. It's just... It's part... It's so, so ingrained in my DNA. Part of my life, so... You know. Can't not vlog that. Try and get a more, get a more daily vlog style going. But I still want to make them more like movie-like at the same time. I'm caught between that and like podcast, just where all the proper gossip happens. The the real talk, like in the last episode, the proper real talk that I want to get back to more often. And no, I might make that like a segment, like the real talk. But it's all it's all trying to be real talk, really. Um, but yeah, with the vlogs, just the more you make one after another, it's more like a winning streak. The more vlog and then you get more views and then you get more motivation to do it but some if ever I get less views on some videos I do feel a bit down and it just gets to me it'd just be one of the things that just be bothering bothering any kind of youtuber if they're getting a bit less views on some video and they feel like it should be getting more I don't know give the people what they want but it's impossible to know exactly how, well I kind of know what videos get more views people seem to care more about when it's about something I've achieved in my life, like a milestone. Like the Padshire football vlogs get a lot more views because of the community around it that know me personally in that and they want to see my take on it. And a lot of people have given me feedback in that sense. I don't always get direct comments but I do get feedback, verbal feedback from people I meet, friends of, of, our, of ours and stuff that watch them, family in Italy, friends and family. Um, you know, everyone, people that I know anyway. And there was a friend of mine, she um, got a GoPro, like, it, she lives in Italy and she got a GoPro and I was like, you better not be copying in my style of vlog. She's like, nah, no, nah, don't worry. <laughs> but yeah, I was like, don't be copying my, my, my vlogging with your GoPro, come on. 
Yeah, you got a Hero 7, think you're, think you're big, do you? You've got a Hero 5 and a Hero 3. These old GoPros in here. Um, but yeah, it's always good when uh, you get feedback from someone, oh, I watch your videos. Then it makes me feel a bit like embarrassed sometimes, like, really? <laughs> right, and then I, I think back, when I'm in the middle of making a video or a podcast right now, I might suddenly think back to like, oh, that person's watching me right now. Or that person will be watching this. Got to consider what I say. But you should always consider what you say, but you're never not going to... You're never going to please everyone. You're never not going to upset someone, but I haven't, I haven't upset anyone. Not that I know of. Like, not, people aren't going to come up to you and say, oh, you offended me in that video. Like vegans, if you're offended, I'm sorry. I've got nothing against vegans. I've never met a vegan. Have I met a vegan? One or two. I, I know people that don't eat certain things because of allergies and stuff and illnesses, that's different. Fair enough, yeah. but yeah. Don't hate me, vegans. Or vegetarians. Um, but you can still be unhealthy and be a vegetarian. It doesn't mean you eat salad every day. Because you might just eat chips. Because they're vegetables. Eat them when they get really obese. Chips are good though. Like buttery toast. Who doesn't like buttery toast? Oi, Mass. Mass. Do you like buttery toast? Yeah. Don't we all? And there you have it, guys. Everyone likes buttery toast. Can't live without buttery toast. It's like that Andy Williams song. Can't live without you. Don't make me sing it. Don't make me sing it. Copyright, otherwise I would dub the shit out of that tune right now. I'll just bang out that tune. Stop moving, you dickhead. I'm excited, guys. What do you want? It's Q3 coming up soon. Yeah, it's annoying that you can't see this because it's copyright. I always thought to like, do like, a commentary kind of style when it comes to sports, but like I said, don't focus on sports when it comes to vlogging because you're just going to lose people. Depends. Like, Super Bowl, yeah, I mentioned it for a bit. The World Cup, I mentioned that a lot last year. I wouldn't, wouldn't stop talking about it, but... Like I said, people, when they watch my videos, they seem to prefer the stuff about things I've achieved in my life as opposed to talking about other people and other things. In some cases, if I want to get views from random people I don't even know, it's more likely to be from talking about gossip and YouTube gossip and people in, in the news and stuff like that. But when it's a milestone in my life, I seem to get even more views. Those are the two ways I seem to know. I know that you can get views. But... I've, whatever a vlog is, I put it out there. I don't care. Like, you, whether they're good or whether I feel it's good or not, it's the consistency of putting out vlogs. And you'll look back at it and you'll learn. You think, what did I do wrong? What did I do right? Um, but it will never be perfect. Nothing will be. Nothing's supposed to be. If it was, then how would you learn? Like from adversity comes success. Difficulties in your life from trauma you might turn that around and use it to help others going through similar things and fight back you know so it's not all doom and gloom you gotta go on that winning streak and then nothing can stop you but yeah just they're, they're doing the helicopter view over Silverstone right now what a view just like a train of cars whizzing around Top three drivers at Silverstone in qualifying have only been separated by 0 0.098 seconds. That's nothing. But yeah, the Ferraris are coming out. Oh boy. Yeah, boy. Beautiful cars. I agree that the paint job could have been better. In previous years, it's been a bit of a darker red. This year, it's like a matte finish on the Ferrari, so yeah. If not, sure what I mean, just Google it and then Google the old versions of the Ferraris and you'll see the difference. But yeah, a lot of people were out there watching Potential Rain. It's an even good commentary, but yeah. Because I, I, I watch the way True Geordie does his live like videos of sporting events, like live commentary of sporting events. Like he'll be watching it and he'll have his mates around the table, his, his crew around the table. Or, and a guest, they'll be talking about like a match that's going on 
while they're watching it. It's like live. So it's kind of like commentary, but like they can't show you the game, but like it's like a live stream as the game's going on, and it's like commentary. So that's pretty interesting, that kind of thing. But I don't know if I do that about sp on sporting events, because I'm not that committed, really. <laughs> You'd have to be committed like every week. Uh, but like when it comes to football, that'd be every week. And I'm not always around to got other commitments. You know, because they say professionals decide, uh, this isn't right, but like professionals like decide what to do each day and in their lives based on other commitments. What, what else they got going on. Amateurs do things based on feelings. Now that's it. Like, I think that's it. Yeah, so like pros do things based on their availability. Amateurs do things based on their feelings. And I do kind of resonate with that. I'm not saying anyone's an amateur or a pro, but like um, do things based on how, how you can juggle your time. So that kind of live stream thing wouldn't work for me as such. I would want to get into live streams, but I'll probably just get in trouble and offend someone. That is the risk of a live stream or anything live. Live TV, we see that go wrong all the time. Um, but the Try Not To Laugh videos, they're so 2017, like, 2016. Can't do them anymore. Though I might just give in and do one of them. Every now and then when I see a PewDiePie video, just takes me back to that side of memes and analysing stuff from a f like, funny point of view, comical point of view. I'm not the best at it, but like, it's good when you like do like cutscenes and add bits in just for extra banter. Like, I always add the odd Borat and Glade success. Just add that in the odd vlog here and there. Meme, the odd meme, it helps. But yeah, meme reviews and that, like PewDiePie does. Um, it takes a lot, a lot to do. At, I mean, he, he says it's effort, like, doesn't really try that hard. But for him, he's like used to it, 12 years in the game, in the YouTube game, so for him it's different. But yeah, it's kind of, a, at the same time, it looks lazy. It looks like he just accumulated some clips and talks about them. But there's a, there's a lot that goes into it, really, compared to a vlog where you're just filming and talking, really, and mixing music in and, like, time lapses and stuff. But yeah, my original vlog is just pure vlogging. Like, I might show you where I am and then talk a bit, and vice versa. And that talk about that day. But I, sometimes I, like on this, I get more analytical, like, more real, real talk. The real, the real shit comes out here. But on a vlog, it's more like, in the moment, a bit more upbeat in some ways. Because you have to be for a vlog, because that's... <laughs> Bless you! <laughs> Don't sneeze. It's disgusting. Fucking millions of germs flying across the room. Think about it, guys, when you sneeze. Someone sneezes on the train. You're getting half their germs in your face. Whether you like it or not, and you will get a cold. I don't go on the train that often or the underground. Mainly the fact that I can't bloody get there get on most trains is, is a problem. And the stress that comes with travelling on public transport if you're disabled or in a wheelchair in any way. Like, it, it messes, messes me up. The bus is just about, come on. But, I don't know. I've got a car, so... Normally the way of transportation. Or I stay local, just go on foot. But, uh, why not? I mean, if you need to get public transport, use it. I mean. Sometimes it's a lot easier. For some people it's just their only way of getting around really. It's what makes London a bit unique. We moan about it but other countries have got it far worse. I, I mean a bit I mean the I've been on the train in Milan. Not as organised as it is here, but it's not too bad, but I expected worse. But we all moan here. But like is it that bad? We moan about the NHS. But think about the amount of insurance people pay for healthcare in America and stuff but we've got the NHS. Like someone like me, for life insurance in America, be through the roof. Like, just because, like, you know, I, I, it's just how it is. And on with a existing illness of any kind, we'll have huge, 
life insurance, obviously. It's obvious, isn't it? Anyone with an illness of any kind. I know because um, when my aunt was sick in America, there was a lot of money being spent on that. Like any sort of treatment you're having, it it costs. I mean, NHS is just a great. We don't realise how great it is, really, and trying to trying to privatise it and get rid of it. I mean, look at America. That look at Bar Obamacare. How bad that was. Well, was that bad? It was messed up anyway. Didn't quite work. Because there's so much poverty in America, really. So they're trying to balance that with the working class and the middle class who don't like Obamacare at all because it's not good enough. And a lot of people go private with their health care anyway. Those who can afford it. You know, people work long, long over their retirement age just to afford insurance. And if you don't work and out of a job, you don't... Like, if you've got a job, you can get insur insured or like your health care and stuff, free health care, dental, all that. So if you don't work, you don't get all that. So to be unemployed in America is pretty bad. I mean, not un I'm saying like people don't normally retire. So I've got an aunt who's like still working. She doesn't need to, but she does because of the insurance, because it gives her health care and stuff. And it helps with the insurance. So there you go. It's different here. We should appreciate the NHS. I've always moaned about it and I still do. Some doctors just really piss me off and rub me the wrong way and just don't explain themselves properly or well, they just don't get it full stop. They don't have any sympathy. Um, they're not human in that sense. They can't afford to be but still like even I'm moaning about the NHS. Could be better but it could be a lot worse. You know, just be, be grateful for the little things. Like I've been saying since the beginning of this vlog it's true though. Like if you're not, if you start off negatively in the morning, you know, how are you going to end the day? You're not going to end the day positive, are you? Necessarily. You've got to take, take pride, like, no, uh, not take pride, I mean, appreciate the little things. Then you will see the bigger picture. And you appreciate things more in general. I think. It, it's all theoretical, it's all just my opinion so don't take it literal or like I'm not taking sides or anything it's just me talking and yeah I mean I've got to do more podcasts for sure I feel like I never actually set out to do them in a certain time but it, it ends up being about an hour and it's like when I slow down in my talking, it's because I've kind of run out of things to say. Normally, I had my little rant, I had my little chat, a little bit of banter, and that's normally when it ends, isn't it? <laughs> um, but yeah, this race is literally a minute left. Everyone's on their out lap. God, I haven't even watched any of it. Well, I kind of watched some of it, but I've really been following it proper deep in the conversation but as it stands Bottas is top Hamilton second All right, they got 57 seconds so if they cross the line before it gets to zero as it's counting down they can do another lap whoever it is but let's see who who gets quickest if you're not into motorsports then no that's fair enough because F1 is pretty boring up I mean, if I was a kid now, I wouldn't be into F1 at all. When I was watching it, it was Schumacher and so many legends. Just, it's completely different now. And Schumacher's, you know, literally like paralysed from his skiing accident. Like nobody, you can't talk, you know. It's just about getting, getting through. You know what I mean? Like, considering how bad that head injury was. This difficult time for his family. His son Mick Schumacher, though, is in Formula Two. In GP two. Whatever it's called. Like the the thing the racing of it like the version of F one before F one. Before you get into it, it's like the youth uh, not the youth version, but like second division. Oh. 
no, like championship. Like imagine F one's the premiership, then Formula Two is the championship. But like, uh, but it's for like the the younger, younger, younger races. I don't make any sense. So younger drivers are in GP two, then they get promoted, they get in GP one. F one. If you know what I'm saying. So yeah, Mick Schumacher's son, Michael Schumacher's son, is in that. So that should be exciting over the next few years. And then when he gets into Formula 1 finally. He's only 15, bear in mind. So that's quite young to be in Formula 2. Then I keep calling it GP2. But yeah, literally time's up now. Are you kidding me? Are you, are you serious? Bottas is first. That would be pissing off Hamilton. For sure. Second going to be pole at, at Silverstone. Keeps winning it. Yeah, Bottas top. Leclerc third. That's the highest ranking Ferrari. Highest placed Ferrari. Better win sixth behind the Red Bulls. That is disappointing. But yeah, and that kind of brings us to the end. Nicely, well timed. Like just a coincidence really. But my plan the whole time was to watch this as I'm talking to you guys. And here we are. I hope this podcast is an hour. That's the average time. Uh, whether you, you watch to the end or not. I mean, please do, you know. Um, you're going to follow what I'm saying better if you watch the whole thing. Um, you know. Vlogs, yeah, I have heard they're too long sometimes, but I enjoy what I'm doing, so... You know, too long is better than too short. But well, then again, if a vlog's short, people are gonna want more next time. I could do like part two. But I've done that in the past, and I don't enjoy it. enjoy that like doing two parts to the same vlog, like to be continued. I did that when I was in Italy. I did like four, five vlogs while I was there. Um, but yeah, I, I don't like doing part ones and part twos. It just confuses the whole situation. Like it just because I import I import all the video clips into one folder, and that'll be the folder where I import import everything from that folder onto Power Director where I edit all the footage, and then make it a vlog basically. So if I'm doing part two, then I got to upload all the same stuff into a new folder and do the same thing, and op open a new um, thing to edit. And then save again, and then do the same thing, um, which is not always worth it. But if my vlogs are too long, I might have to do that. Depending, you know, twenty minutes, too long. Fifteen minutes probably still too long, but I end up always going over the ten minute mark. Always can't help myself. I'm just so focused and so creative that so focused on the creative side that that fills up the time, and me just chatting gibberish the whole time for at least a good three minutes at the beginning of most videos. Like, I can't just do a quick intro and carry on. No, I can't do, I can't be doing that. It's paragraphs and novels I'm, I'm talking. Some people just intro with a sentence and they carry on. And the rest of the vlog, I can't do that. Same with the, with the podcast, I'm trying to end it now. And it's like, ten minutes in, to the end, to me trying to end this 19th podcast. What a ride it has been since the beginning. And I've got more relaxed with the style of podcasting. Every now and then I do a bit more research on a certain topic or TV show or book or like phrase and I talk about it. But that was at the, at the, at the early days of the vlog, of the podcast, sorry. When I was uploading them to SoundCloud then to iTunes, but I didn't get any views or listens or whatever you want to call it. So I prefer the visual side of it doing them as like video podcasts, vidcasts, this is vidcast podcast, whatever you want to call it, 19. It's the end of another one, this is the end, <laughs> literally this is the end, 3, 2, 1, take it easy fam, peace, I, can't, I was going to do it in a high pitched voice, but my voice is actually gone right now, alright,
拜。